Hello, everybody out there. I hope you can find me. I see one person has found me already. And uh, while these are the others are joining, please let me know whether the tone is all right and you can hear me well. Hi, Maria. Uh, thank you very much for your talk. Um, uh, it was lovely. And thank you also for inviting me today. I'm uh, uh, as always, very nervous. <laughs> and uh, before I start, I definitely have to say happy birthday to Tony. And I wish you all the best uh, of luck for your great new year and all the stuff which is happening in your life right now. Enjoy. And uh, as you can see, I brought myself in a summer mood, even though here in Hamburg, where I do my tarot readings and teachings, it is a uh, freezing cold. <laughs> So I try my best to be um, summary. And um, as you know, I, um, <laughs> well, the coffee, yeah, I, I always turn the lid. <laughs> um, um, as you know, I want to talk about uh, flirting and uh, Jane Austen. And um, I did a little presentation for you. And uh, you know, we Germans are very heady people. So please bear with me that I'm going to read a bit from my script today because I have so many thoughts and I needed to structure them. Um, let's start, shall we? If there are any questions, I will probably answer them later because first um, I will want to go to, through the script. And yeah, have your cards ready if you have any. Oh, I'm sure you have some cards. You don't need necessarily to have tarot. You can also do other decks, uh, oracle cards, if you feel like it. Okay. <laughs> so let's start. Um, I called this talk flirting like Jane Austen or how to love painlessly. And uh, I start with a little quote from a book from my teacher, Tony Willis, who taught me most of what I know. Uh, and the quote goes like this. In one of his plays, Alistair Crawley describes an amusing situation. A lady enters the drawing room of a famous astrologer for the first time and she finds herself transfixed by the master's gaze. Before she can say anything, the great man states with finality that he knows why she's here. Madame is concerned about an affair of the heart. Naturally, the lady is highly impressed by his psychic powers. Whereupon the astrologer drops his superior mask and explains that 95% of his clients visit, visit him because of emotional difficult difficulties and that he can thus impress almost all of them with his knowledge if he opens each center, a session with the same statement. All who study the cards uh, um, will find that Crawley is correct in his estimate. About 95% of all clients are mainly or exclusively interested in their emotional prospects, perhaps because love is more unpredictable and capricious than any other subject in life. Well, it's not only the tarot that has this percentage, <laughs> but also the novels of Jane Austen. Hi, from Philadelphia. Hi, everybody. <laughs> um, and we can say that the Tarot and Jane Austen's novels are both excellent guides uh, in the matters of love, but also in the matters of life. Both reflect our problems uh, lovingly, ironically, and above all, they give very sensible advice, which we all need in the matters of love, I think. So instead of investing in an expensive fortune teller hotline when you have love problems, why not invest in a Jane Austen novel instead and be entertained and learn something by that novel? Or you just listen to my talk today. I have uh, many things to do at the same time. So <laughs> wait, please, for me with my technical stuff. Yes. So 
What do you have to expect today? First, I'm going to give you a few words about uh, Jane Austen. I assume you know her, but still I thought I better talk about her a bit if you don't know her so well. Um, then I, I'm going to explain you how you can have a successful date with Mr. Darcy. Um, and then I want to show you some of Jane Austen's word, uh, work in word and image. And of course, in the end, you get a promised uh, spread by uh, which uh, is about flirting like Jane Austen. <laughs> Sorry, I was just thinking about the coffee. <laughs> Sorry, Mariah. <laughs> um, here's another quote, which I want to give you. As long as people will fall in love and find an exhaustible source of fascination in the whims and eccentricities of the human psyche, the books of Jane Austen will not be forgotten. That is a quote by Diane Wilkes, who did uh, the Jane Austen tarot, which is my favorite tarot deck uh, of, uh, with a Jane Austen theme. And uh, she's a great fan of the author. If you don't uh, have the deck, which is out of print now, try at least to get the book. Um, and the book is really uh, fantastic. It's, um, I'm going to show you later when I'm big in the screen again. Uh, it's, it's very uh, well written and many clues for Taro, but also for Jane Austen. Um, and I assume, as I said, that you all are familiar with Jane Austen uh, since she has been for over 200 years on the top, top bestseller list of literature and uh, this all over the world. If you Google her name now today, just her name, you will get at least, uh, I just did it yesterday, four, uh, 44 million uh no more, 44 billion hits on Google. So this is quite an achievement. Her works have been turned into uh, movies incredible often. Um, there are at least uh, around 20 interpretations of Pride and Prejudice in film. Uh, we have Bollywood films, we have zombie movies, uh, we have modern adaptations like Bridget Jones or Clueless, um, we have countless uh, literary sequels and prequels to her books, we have uh, romances about her own life, um, yeah, and not to mention that there are thousands of dissertations and uh, other studies on her books. Um, so for me, this is quite uh, a bit of um, uh, a really uh, for of uh, the tarot because um, both are about imagination and stirring imagination in other people, and they're both a very good projection screen. So they really match well together, I think, Jane Austen and tarot. Um, yeah, so. Who was Jane Austen? Yes, first is uh, my favorite too, I have to say. <laughs> um, like this. So on the side where I'm sitting, you see one of the two only existing images, uh, pictures of Jane Austen, and uh, they were both drawn by her sister, Cassandra. And as you can see next uh, to it, there is a very, uh, well, I would say trivialized uh, image, uh, which was, uh, which this portrait by Cassandra was turned into, into in, in the Victorian age. And, uh, this is one of the reasons why Jane Austen has such a coy image as she has uh, in, uh, for many people today. It's just about love, they say, and romance. Um, in fact, uh, not long ago, it was still claimed that she was a timid rural spinster, afraid of the real world and city life, like going to Bath or something like that. Um, but I think uh, it was in the 2000s, uh, her juvenile, no, it must have been the 90s. 
uh, her juvenile uh, lady Susan was found, Juvenilia, I think you say, uh, so a book she wrote when she was quite young. And if you read Lady Susan, it has uh, at least uh, the same perfidity than uh, as uh, Dangerous Liaisons um, by Laclos. And so her image gradually changed from this coy person into a more ironic and even sardonic person at times. The facts we now have about Jane Austen are that uh, she was born on the 16th of uh, December in 1775 in Steventon in England. And she was the daughter of an independent clergyman and had seven brothers and sisters and they had very little money. Uh, she started writing when she was very young and uh, she wrote her Lady Susan, which is very ironic and very unseemingly for that age when she was 14. Uh, by the time she was 20, she had uh, written three novels and uh, many other followed. But it was not until 1811, when she was 36, that her book Sense and Sensibility was published. Uh, and this was done anonymously. She died only five years later at a quite young age on the 18th of July, um, 1817. Um, and she probably had Addison's disease. And after her death, her brother Henry made sure that the identity of uh, the books uh, she had written was became uh, known. Uh, but she never experienced something like the um, success of Pride and Prejudice, which came out after her death, which is quite sad, I think. Um, and she never got any money for these books uh, and died a poor woman, unmarried, which is, again, ironically, uh, since she is the master of romance and love and marriage. Um, here is the second portrait of uh, her. <laughs> you can, can't see much of her again. Um, and I just uh, like to compare it to the three of wands uh, with this. It has this perspective of uh, expectation and expectation more than you get perhaps in the end. Um, many still consider her as uh, um, being an unrealistic writer um, and living in a world which is not real. And again, I think this is quite a good uh, compare. It's quite well compared to Tarot because Tarot skeptics always think we are kind of nutty nerds <laughs> living in a parallel world. Um, and uh, there's another uh, comparison I want to make to tarot or to oracle cards. Her books all play in the world of boudoirs and parlors. And uh, it's there where card reading kind of was invented, wasn't it? What wasn't it? Oh, sorry. Oh, my German is getting in the way of my English. And uh, she was sitting at home like most of the women of the time. And if they hadn't been doing this, we wouldn't have cards today, I think. Uh, and because she lived such a restricted life, the life of a woman of her times, she was able to observe human behavior in detail and portray it very well in her novels. Um, Anyone who will read her sharply will recognize that she is not only ironic, but also very feministic. And uh, she has a very social, critical, and even a political um, note in her novels. Like Tarot, she mirrors society on a very small plane very well, I think. Enough said about Jane. Um, women can very well identify with one or two characters in the novels of Jane Austen. Um, 
thinking of transgender, I'm sure some men can identify also with uh, these characters. Um, so we have the lovely Jane, who's always sweet, the witty Eliza, the poor Fanny from Mansfield Park, which is actually my favorite character of all, and uh, many other great uh, women. Um, and they all are out there to get men and uh, the most famous man people want to get is of course Mr. Darcy. And perhaps you two want to uh, find out how to get Mr. Darcy. Um, yes, how to get the next foil. <laughs> so here we go. Here's Mr. Darcy and um, he has been portrayed by many. I chose today not to show, not to show Colin Firth in his uh, wet shirt. I think we, we have seen this one enough. Uh, this one is quite uh, yummy as well, I think. And um, there is uh, another ardent Jane Austen admirer called uh, Lauren Henderson, who wrote quite a few romances, but also the Jane Austen's guide to dating. And in this guide to dating, she uh, develops rules for flirting and uh, getting true love by, um, uh, by going through the novels of Jane Austen. And if you're a Jane, Jane Austen fan and know this, don't know this book, I highly recommend you to read it. It's quite entertaining. Um, so what are these rules? If you like someone, show it. Don't flaunt your feelings unless they are reciproc reciprocated. Mm. Difficult word, reciprocated. Do not play games in love. Trust your instincts. Don't get infatuated with appearances. Look for someone who brings out your good side. Don't settle for anything less than love. Be witty, but not cynical, indiscreet or cruel. Be prepared to wait for the right person and rebuke your partner when necessary. Yeah, so what do you think? I think these are quite uh, good uh, rules for flirting. And also these are very good rules for giving um, advice when you have uh, clients uh, and they come to you and uh, address love, but also for yourself when you are asking the cards about love. I think they are very, um, if you stick to these rules, I think you get far in love and in getting somebody who really uh, pleases you and you are pleased by him. <laughs> Another quote, uh, uh, which is the quote I always consider when I do card readings for people, is from uh, Madeleine Montalban, who is a teacher of my teacher, and uh, I really like her work as well. She's not very well known. She lived in London in the early 20th century. While the 22 major arcanas of the tarot can be seen as a roadmap for the journey through the incarnation cycle, the 56 minor arcana may represent us as human beings in our own right and the forces we set in motion to evolve or destroy ourselves. Whenever you consult the cards, remember that they only tell you what can happen if you blindly surrender to fate. The true art of card reading is to learn what you can do to, um, yeah, <laughs> that was not uh, to shape your life. <laughs> um, and in fact, you can change this last sentence to the true art of Jane Austen is to teach us what uh, you can do to shape your life. So again, I see a similarity between Jane Austen and uh, the tarot. This brings me now to the tarot deck um, by Diana Wilkes and uh, the artist is Lola Ar Ariragi. Um, the deck was created uh, in 2006 
and uh, it's now out of print and I think it's quite difficult to get it even second hand but I really would advise you to get it if you like Jane Austen. Um, she uses a lot of film material from the films done before 2006 um, and it helps to understand this deck if you know these films but of course you can always uh, understand them even if you don't uh, know the uh, deaf, in depth meaning of the films. I want to show you a few images from this deck because I really uh, think it's a great deck and uh, for one, we have here the idea that Jane Austen portray is portrayed herself here in the deck as the high priestess. Um, quite, uh, of course, uh, the Victorian image is taken of her, but uh, I really like the way she is portrayed uh, holding her book. Um, and uh, she becomes kind of uh, not only the author, but the librarian of the unconscious. And uh, yeah, this is uh, quite nice, I think. And also the other trumps in the deck are um, really interesting. I have some here. So we have um, Mary as a chariot. It was a bit quick. We have a social gathering as the wheel of fortune. We have uh, the lovers, uh, the situation of Darcy, Elizabeth and Mrs. Uh, Miss Bennet. We have the magician. This is, um, <laughs> that's really quick. <laughs> Lady Susan as the devil. Um, and uh, we have here funny as the hanged man. And uh, I really need to work with this presentation because definitely it was too quick. Um, I think I have time. I just give you a, a second uh, round of this if I can manage this somehow. No, I can't. I can't think. Go back. Can I? Ah, yes, I can. Just uh, for you to make it possible to see the chariot, this, uh, the wheel of fortune, the lovers, the magician. The devil and the hanged man or the hanged woman in this case yeah which brings me to uh, one I could uh, I would like to look uh, with you more thoroughly at which is Trump um, the, the Trump strength and uh, I think this is uh, really a funny interpretation. Again, from Mansfield Park, we see here Fanny being uh, admired by Henry Craw Crawford, who is quite a bon vivant and actually uh, really fancies her because she is so uh, coy, but uh, she's already in love with somebody else. And... Uh, uh, he wants to seduce her very ardently and he tries everything, but she uh, stays true to herself. And uh, I think this is very well portrayed the way uh, she uh, kind of keeps his mouth <laughs> shut like the virgin on the strength card. So um, I really want to uh, make you interested in this deck because I think there are brilliant ideas in this one. Also, with the uh, minor arcana, we have uh, interesting uh, an interesting setting. The cards are set in monochrome colors. For every suit, there is another color. So we have obviously um, uh, the candles, which uh, are wands usually, and they are in fire. Um, each ace is devoted to one of the novels of Jane Austen. So the fire one is Pride and Prejudice. We have the coins um, um, and the coins remain coins because money is important in whatever century you are. Uh, here we see the two of coins, again, a social gathering. 
Yes, Gerda, I do think it's a beautiful deck. Then we have the swords, and uh, the swords uh, swords are turned into feathers because they are about writing. And um, here we see, um, I forgot his name now, um, a Captain Wentzworth from an Elliot who has just... Uh, uh, been sent away by Anne, and uh, he now goes to sea to seek his fortune in the Six of Swords. I quite like this rendering as well. And we have uh, this light bluish color for water. The, um, the cups are turned into teacups in this deck. Um, here's the nine of uh, cups. It's a social gathering. There are loads of social gatherings in Jane Austen. Um, and this is the one from Emma, the uh, Christmas gathering. Yeah, the remaining pips are all about other scenes from different Jane Austen novels. And uh, always uh, the motives are very well chosen, I think. I especially like the court cards. And uh, I brought you three here from, from the court cards. Again, you can see this monochrome uh, image of the cards. The first one is uh, Charlotte from Pride and Prejudice who marries uh, not very reasonably um, for money but on the other hand she doesn't have much of another choice but to marry for money so she is the maiden as the um, princess princesses are called in this deck of coins. Um, the other maiden we have there on the other side is, of course, a watery, and it's Marion from Sense and Sensibility. I think you can see Kate Winslet here quite well in this card. And, uh, well, she is uh, one of the watery, most watery persons uh, in all of Jane Austen's novels, and very befittingly, the Princess of Cups. Um, both maidens are too fixated we can say, on their uh, quality, on, on their element, and this is what causes problems for them. And in the middle, again, we have Captain Wentworth, which you saw before. He is the Lord of Candles, so the fire god, the fire lord. Um, and uh, he's really well portrayed here as well in this carpe diem attitude. Um, after eight years uh, of being on the sea, he returns to um, where he was sent away from by um, Anne, who was persuaded uh, not to marry him by her so-called friends. Um, he is now a very eligible captain. The young girls all uh, want to get him, but they don't use the uh, flirting rules of Jane Austen. Uh, and he wants to take his revenge on Anne, who is with 28 of years now an old spinster. And after this, the novel and Elliot kind of takes off. Yeah, I hope you can see that I'm quite <laughs> into the deck and quite into Jane Austen. And I'm hope, I hope I don't bore you to death with this, but uh, um, I think it's always interesting to bring together something we love and tarot. And this is why I want to show you this. And uh, this is a card I really like as well um, from its portrayal and from its spirit. It's the 10 of swords or 10 of feathers, we must say, from uh, the deck. And it's a important scene in Pride and Prejudice. Um, Eliza has just learned that uh, Willoughby has eloped with her sister Lucy, uh, Lydia, sorry, with Lydia. And um, she started after she rebuked Darcy um, well, for one time, she started to kind of fancy him after all. And now she has read this letter and she knows that all her hopes are gone. And you just uh, see take him his leave after being very occurred with her. Um, and uh, what uh, Jane Austen says in her book about uh, this scene is, everything must sink under such a proof of family weakness, under such disgrace. Never 
uh, had she been so sure of honestly being able to love Mr. Darcy as now, when all love must be in vain. And I think this is uh, very well fit with this feeling we can have when we have a tense of sort situation. So, yeah, this is kind of uh, <laughs> what I wanted to show you with the uh, uh, words and images from Jane Austen. Um, I also want to show you the potential re card uh, client, uh, people who come to you when you are a card reader or when you read your cards yourself. Here you see Harriet from the novel Emma um, juggling <laughs> all the guys she could end up with uh, while drinking her tea, which is the rendering of the ten uh, of the seven of uh, cups in this uh, um, deck. Um, yeah, she is the perfect customer um, for um, what we learned in the beginning about the play of Alistair Craw Crawley. And uh, I think she is the one who can really do with the reading I now want to show you, the spread I want to show you, um, um, which is also from the book I, um, uh, I'm going to show you in a moment when I switch off the presentation. But first, let me show you the spread. Or before I do this, are there any questions I can answer now? I just go briefly through what you have written um, no, no questions. Oh, Maria, you don't like Mansfield Park. <laughs> we need to discuss this because I think it's uh, great. I wrote my dissertation on it, actually, because I really think it's a fantastic novel. Um, but this is uh, everybody's taste. <laughs> Okay, so no questions. So I show you the spread and um, it's from the book, as I said, but I changed it a bit because it uh, is uh, written before the transgender movement took off and I thought it's better not only to try to uh, make it from the female perspective, but also give you a male perspective and whatever you feel like, male, female, or in between, you can choose your partner in this deck. Um, it helps if you know the novel Pride and Prejudice, because this is um, what this reading is based on. But if you don't know the characters. Um, I still give you um, hints how you can I translate this for you and it's quite easy. Um, we have five positions and the first position is, um, well, let's first, I first need to tell you what you need to ask the cards. It's really a um, reading you can use for flirting. You go out now, here in Germany, we are allowed uh, since yesterday to leave our houses again for uh, more than just uh, doing the shopping, which is nice. You go out, you meet people, you fancy them. And now you have met somebody you think you can uh, get uh, closer to. And this is where this reading is useful for. So, um, the first card out of five you draw is uh, what is the most Darcy-esque, so like Mr. Darcy, um, the most Darcy-esque about this person. And I changed it to, of course, what is the most Lizzie-like about this person you want to get to know in more detail. And you can translate this if you don't know so much about these characters and what is the most intriguing about this person. So um, in the second position is, uh, as you can see, Wickham and Lydia. Um, the second position is what is the most Wickham-esque th uh, thing about this person or the most Lydia-like 
thing about them, which means what is the most ambiguous about them where not you're where you're not sure whether they are good for you, but uh, still uh, they can be charming. Um, the third position is uh, in what way are they uh, uh, are they are you and he or her the most Bingley-esque or Jane-esque like together, uh, which means, um, which is, uh, where are you the most harmonious with one another? And uh, the fourth position is uh, the Colin-esque position, Mr. Colin, and I also put there Lady de Burke. Um, they are much more of a couple than him and Charlotte, I think. Um, and this is where uh, this person is, ha has a buffonesque quality. So something quirky or something you don't like so much about them. Uh, what is their most uh, buffonesque aspect? And the last uh, card is about, um, is it a wise decision to uh, get this person uh, to know deeper. So is it perhaps better just to flirt that with them or think of a, a long run relationship with them? And of course, for this position, the Bennets uh, are the representatives uh, because the marriage of Mr. and Mrs. Bennett uh, was taken, uh, was done not um, so, it was not such a sensible marriage. He thought she was pretty, she thought he was rich or richer than her family, and uh, it never turned out so well. So just a reminder um, what will happen on the long run. I think this is uh, quite a good reading for getting to start it with somebody, but it's also an interesting reading if you are already in a long-term relationship or having started a relationship with somebody, you can double check. And uh, since I have still some time, I will do a reading with you, I thought. Um, and I need for this to, to change a bit here the representation. I think I can do it like this. So now I'm bigger. First, I can show you um, the book if you want to get it. Uh, it's just a uh, Tower of Jane Austen by Diana Wilkies. And uh, secondly, I need to switch my camera. Hold on. I do it like. Da -da 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 -da. Oof. That was not clever. Just give me a sec. Yes, I did it. So um, now you can see my cards here. And uh, my son was drawing cards uh, before. I didn't see this. And um, well, I am actually in a relationship of long standing now. In a few days, we will have what we call here parsley wedding, which is 12 years and a half. Um, and I will ask the cards uh, just for a sample reading about these five qualities uh, we have in common or not in common. So this is my first card. Oops, what is happening here? This is my second card. I do a reading with the Jane Austen Tarot. My third card, my fourth card, and my fifth card. Yeah, and if you are up to it and uh, still with me, um, you, of course, can draw the cards now as well for your own reading. And as I said, you don't def definitely don't need the Jane Austen Tarot. You can take any tarot you fancy. But you can also need that, just change something here. Mm. Um, but you can also do the um, uh, the Linomore or Kipper 
or gypsy cards, whatever you fancy. Okay, this is not a big screen. So I will just uh, go from card to card here. The first card is uh, the Darcy Esk. Uh, I'm married to a man. Uh, the Darcy Esk, uh, I see him in the most intriguing about him. <laughs> well, the five of quilts. Hmm. I don't know whether this is very intriguing. <laughs> You could turn it this way. Um, perhaps you can help me with this. It's always a bit difficult to do a reading for oneself. But uh, what do I see on this card? I see the um, combination of... Uh, uh, it's a situation from Emma where they are all having a picnic and Emma is misbehaving with Frank and gets annoyed. Uh, no, and... Um, Mr. Knightley gets annoyed because of this. Uh, um, well, and if I think of the situation, I can immediately relate what's intriguing about my husband. He is always uh, quite good in criticizing me on the spot uh, um, when I, I, I'm a bit uh, like Emma in the respect that I talk too much uh, and uh, kind of uh, am able to hurt without thinking so he brings me to the ground uh, and um, makes me more realistic at times i'm not sure whether i find this most intriguing about him but um, after all we have been now living together totally for one year um, without quarreling <laughs> and i'm quite happy that not something worth came, worse came out but perhaps you have other ideas about this and uh, please let me know while you're watching so the second card is uh, uh, what is a most wicker mess uh, about him. So most uh, ambiguous about him. I'm not sure whether I would uh, really advise somebody with a five sword card in the most intriguing uh, to go on dating somebody, I have to say. But uh, who knows? Well, <laughs> I definitely seem to be more out for the ambiguous, uh, which in fact is true. I quite uh, like the Wickham character myself. Um, so there I have the um, King of Cups, which is a card which came very often up when we first dated me and my husband. Um, and uh, actually, I'm quite intrigued by his being a, a Knight of uh, Cups. He is a very Piscean, he is a Piscean, Pisces, and he can be very uh, good in creating illusions and uh, be very charming. Yeah, I can totally relate to this. You can see I'm already warming up now. <laughs> and uh, the third card I have is, uh, in what way are we most uh, uh, Bingley-esque, Jane-esque together? So what, wh how... Uh, do we present ourselves to other people or are um, harmonious with one another with one another? And for this, I drew the um, four of cups. Oh, that is uh, I'm just trying to figure out what situation is there. It's, uh, I think it's for Mansfield Park um, in the boudoir, somebody doing stitching work. Um, well, the Four of Cups is a balanced card. <laughs> I hope my husband doesn't see this video, I have to say. <laughs> the Four of Cups um, are about um, being content with one another. And uh, I really have to say we have been in lockdown now, in hard lockdown for many, many months. And uh, we're still managing to getting on well in the home without uh, killing each other. And um, I think this is tranquility and peace if you look at this card and I can relate to this from this point of view. I think I have to redo this reading uh, in summer again. Then we have the Buffon card, the Collinesque or the Burrow card. And um, here I have the Two of Feathers. This is again a situation from Emma where poor Jane Fairfax is forced to keep silent about her 
engagement to Frank Churchill uh, due to circumstances. And um, this is a buffonesque. Well, I think that uh, at times we um, keep, we don't, uh, well, it's not buffonesque, but uh, what I think is missing sometimes, especially if you have been married for a long time, is to talk deeper about things. Uh, you try to get your daily life, uh, you have your children, you do your work, and there's never much time to really have a decent, deep talk, like, like you have when you're starting a relationship, when you're flirting all the time and just uh, um, uh, just can't uh, do anything but talk and uh, sleep with one another. Um, so... <laughs> Um, it's not so much buffonesque, but perhaps the advice to look into this and uh, be more talk talk to one another more. Yes, and uh, now I'm of course very uh, interested in finding out, out whether it is a good decision to stay with this guy in the long run, <laughs> or whether after twelve and a half years I should be stop stopping uh, stop seeing them i am a bit nervous now <laughs> and uh, what i got is the Oof. good lord i'm happy um the nine of cups <laughs> so i i can live with this um it's a, it's a good card for, I think, for long-lasting happiness. And uh, especially it shows me that once we are able to go out again, to do more our own stuff than always uh, sitting at home as we're now doing, um, life will be much better again. Helen says it's an interesting spread. Thank you, Helen. I think it's uh, quite effective, I have to say. Um, I'm going to switch over again to the other camera. Hold on with me. Yes, stay with me. Whoops. Yes. And uh, actually, I'm done with my talk now. Um, the question is now whether you have any questions. So... Do you have any questions? I um, still have some time and can answer them. But if not, um, you can also have a break um, before the next talk starts. But uh, if you have the time, I would like your feedback on how you liked this. Uh, was this too heady? Was this uh, interesting to you? Um, not my favorite two, not my favorite two. I don't know uh, just now what you're relating to, um, to the deck, to my reading, to Mansfield Park. Please let me know. Um, I think I talked you to the ground and this is a German expression, I think. <laughs> Actually, today is a quite a busy day for me. I have uh, four live sessions today. And uh, this is why I'm a bit uh, um, losing my words at times as well. Um, Helen is saying... Uh, that's the wrong one. Um, I would like, uh, I would also read the fourth position regarding being Colinesque uh, misplaced priority. That's really interesting, Helen. Yeah, you're quite right. Misplaced priorities. Um, yes, definitely something which uh, happens in relationships and especially in relationships where both people are constantly working and doing their own projects. Thank you for this hint, Helen. Um, Jacqueline, 
uh, you are from Hamburg or are you greeting me because I am from Hamburg? <laughs> um, yeah, good ideas. Um, he was more interested in position the, than the person, somebody trophy, you see. Um, uh, you want, uh, he was more interested in position the, than the person, someone, a trophy, you see. Um, I'm not sure what you're relating to. The fourth position, um, no, the fourth position, uh, Mr. Collins, he is somebody who is uh, always talking nonsense and uh, is a very, uh, is a relentless person who really insults you constantly um, by using nice words. And he's also um, kind of, uh, I don't know how to express this in English. Um, he um, is uh, the subservient of uh, Lady de Burrow who always wants to be flattered and he's extremely good in flattering. Um, ja, du bist aus Hamburg, Jacqueline. Da müssen wir uns mal kennenlernen. <lacht> Lustig. Um, yeah, so, yeah, Mr. Collins, he is, uh, so, so this is a character trait in the other person, if you're using this spread, which is um, not so nice and where you are, um, yeah, not uh, looking at the other person, but at the image of the other person you want to create you for yourself, I would say. Well, if there are no other questions, I think I'm done. I um, hope you enjoyed it. I hope I gave you a bit of a flirty summer spirit. As I said here in Hamburg, the weather is not uh, in the flirty spirit, but I think I need to have a walk now, get my head clear, um, like Lizzie, whenever she needs to reflect on something, on Mr. Darcy or on anybody or anything else. And um, I leave you to it. I wish you a great um, day, open day with the WDA. And uh, Mariah already told you um, what you can expect more and uh, how you can become a member of the WDA and what you expect there. We have a, a great uh, private Facebook group. I'm managing the live events uh, in this group. And uh, I haven't done so much in May because it was quite difficult to get people. Um, I think they're all flirting out there. But for June, uh, expect more interesting live uh, chats with uh, loads of interesting people who all are members of the WDA. It's a great family. And uh, I think we all uh, enjoy each other's company here, even though we are from uh, meeting from great distances or from Hamburg to Hamburg like Jacqueline and me. So bye for now. And I speak to you here or somewhere on Facebook or Insta or wherever um, we connect. Have a um, great day and uh, yeah, speak to you soon. <laughs> bye.